What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. Today, we are here with more Game of Thrones universe-esque stuff. I, it's not Game of Thrones, it's House of the Dragon, which is about the Targaryen household. But it's, you know, it's in the universe of Game of Thrones. Technically, it's not even in the universe of Game of Thrones. Technically, it's in the universe of A Song of Ice and Fire. But we call it Game of Thrones because that's what the show was called. And it, the, it didn't have the name of the books. But I am very excited for this. Game of Shr I was gonna say Game of Thrones and then I said Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is one of my favorite shows ever. It's when I first found out about Game of Thrones, it took my life by storm, man. Like I this was when I came in really late to the game. And I remember I tried watching the first season like three or four times. I couldn't get through like the first three episodes. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna binge the first season. I don't care. I'm gonna sit down, watch all of it at once, see if I like it. Loved it, then I binged the whole show. There was seven seasons at the time. That's when I jumped onto the show. And then I watched all seven seasons probably eight or nine times in a row. Like, this show was insanely good. I have the books on my shelf. I haven't read the books yet. I do plan on reading the books. I have them there. Um, I have George R. R. Martin's um, kind of what this show is based off of, I suppose. Like, it's the book up there. I don't know if you won't be able to see it on the camera. Uh, technically, I could grab it. You know what? Fuck you. I'm going to grab it. It's the... Uh, the Game of Thrones Fire and Blood book. You know, it's the 300 years before Game of Thrones. It's just about the Targaryen household, pretty much. Um, I haven't read all of this. I did start reading it at a time, and then I stopped for whatever reason. It's still on my list of things to read, but I do also have that book. But that's probably the book what this is kind of based off of. It's about, you know, House Targaryen and whatnot. So I'm excited to watch this show. Very excited to get back into the universe of Game of Thrones. I hope it's good. I hope it's amazing. Season 8 broke my heart and turned me off to the show completely. Like, this show enveloped my life so much. I loved it so much. I watched it. I read about it. I, I was I was just infatuated by it. And then Season 8 hit and broke my heart. And for like two and a half years straight, I didn't even want to think about Game of Thrones. I didn't want to look at it. I didn't want to see it. Nothing. It killed me. It killed the love I had for the show. And then after about two and a half years, I finally got over it and I was like, okay, I can go back to loving the show and loving the story and the characters without getting hung up on season eight. But now I'm happy to be back in this universe. I'm very excited to see this episode. In case you don't know, full length reactions and early access on Patreon, so check that out. But without further ado, let's watch this episode. 10 adult dragons under its yoke. 10 dragons. No power in the world could stand against God Goddamn. For he knew the cold truth. The only thing that could tear down the house of the dragon was itself. Mm. Oh man, dude, what a good start. Oh, uh, I got goosebumps right there. The music coming in, the narration, everything. I literally just got goosebumps. I love being back in this universe. Of course, they have to tell us about Daenerys just so we can like connect it. <laughs> that this is 172 years before Daenerys is born. Oh boy. Nice. Gorgeous. Wait, who rode Beleria on the Black Dread? I'm trying to think. I think we'll see Beleriand in this show. The biggest dragon to ever live. I think we'll see him in this show, so that's kind of awesome. Damn, look at it. Look at King's Landing. So good to see it not burnt to a crisp. Oh, they have a statue of a dragon as well. That's awesome. Yeah, man, to be fair, yeah, the Targaryen dynasty lasted a long time. A very long time. Bro, if there's another season of this show, do you think we get to see Robert Baratheon take over? And we get to see the War of the Five Armies, I think it was? Or the War of the Five Kings? Is that before and or after? I forget. But, because I know it's Robert Baratheon who, you know, we remember that from season one, where he usurps... Mad King Ares, and you see Jamie kill King Ares. I know this takes place 172 years before that, but I mean, like, do you think in the future of the show we might ever see it? Because that would be awesome. Like, full circle connecting it. <laughs> and the music, too. Oh, dude, I'm gonna bust a nut. You will lie in this bed soon enough for an era. This discomfort is how we serve the realm. I'd rather serve as a knight and ride to battle in glory. I remember Arya was inspired by her, I think. 
she's the one that she liked the most. The Crown has heard your report, Lord Corliss, and takes it under advisement. Shall we discuss the heir's tournament, Your Grace? I would be delighted. That guy's definitely the little the finger of this table, without a doubt. And my heir will soon put all of this damnable hand wringing to rest himself. Mm. My heir, even though he has a daughter. He passed through the Red Keep's gates at first. Fair. So cool seeing a more accurate depiction of the throne. Because in the books, it's more like this than it was in the in the actual show of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Turn around. I forgot true. Now Valyrian steel won't be as rare anymore either because they have the dragons. So they can still forge the steel. Oh, that's going to be hype. And she said, like Dark Sister. I think Dark Sister is her sword, if I remember correctly. I mean, I'm already feeling the, the incest coming on between these two. And they are Targaryen, so I mean, you know, that's that's how it is. And burnt her own fleet off Sunspear to show her people that they were finished running. What are you doing? Do you remember? <laughs> if the scepter sees the... I like Rhaenyra a lot already. She's awesome. Prince Daemon seems a little bit like Jaime. Is it healing? You know? It's kind of arrogant. Might I suggest cauterization? Cauterization would be a wise cause of treatment, Your Grace. It will be painful. Fine. Fine. Oh wait, but does he have the blood of the dragon? Does he get hurt by hot temperatures? I wonder if it's gonna be one of those again. Prince Damon and Rhaenyra both have the blood of the dragon in them. I know it is my duty to provide you an heir. And I'm sorry if I have failed you in that I am. I've mourned all the dead children I can. So does he fuck somebody else to get a male heir? It's like that Wolf of Wall Street scene. <laughs> With a common denominator. They're a pack of hounds. The sated and honed for the hunt. <laughs> no longer. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. That was kind of fire. I'm liking Prince Damon, I'm not gonna lie. I'm liking him. Damn. Did these people even do anything, or are they just homeless? Oh, R.I.P. his hand. No, no! He farted! No. <laughs> he farted! Oh my god, did they cut his dick off? Thief! Oh my god. No. Ah. Although I think he said raper, so I guess I'm okay with that. So thieves lose hands, murderers get killed, and rapers lose their balls. As punishments go, I suppose it fits the crime. Ah. Damn! Gruesome. That's how I like my Game of Thrones, baby. Brother, <laughs> his face, his face. Carry on. Rhea is your wife, a good and honorable lady of the Vale. In the Vale, men are said to fuck sheep instead of women. I can assure you, the sheep are prettier. Dear me. You may Damn. Damn. For the seven to honor your wife. Damn. Now, if you're in want of a woman to warm your bed, your own lady wife passed recently. <laughs> Shit. Did she not? Otto. I'm not gonna lie, I am liking Prince Damon more by the minute. <laughs> Classic sex scenes, it's Game of Thrones, can't have it without nudity! <laughs> well, that's awkward. Many of you have traveled long leagues to be at these games, but I promise you will not be disappointed. Oh, and this is the pit as well. Wow. We saw this pit in season 7 and season 8, but now it's fully built. It's not destroyed. I think. Dang. You could have the Rathian's tongue for that. Tongues will not change the succession. Let them wag. Did he just say Baratheon? Was that House Baratheon? I couldn't see a stag sigil. Maybe it was. 
they're to be married as soon as he It is a Baratheon. Wow. Nice. POV jousting shot. That was awesome. It's in cold, so. I'm told Sir Criston is common born son of Lord Dondarrion Stuart, but other than that, and the fact that he's just unhorsed both of the Baratheon lads, I really couldn't say. I also heard Dondarrion. Like Beric Dondarrion? So many names. It's all coming back, you know? It's trying it's so fun trying to connect like the ancestry to all the people we know in the future. Bro, his outfit. That armor is awesome. The black and red and the helmet with the wings. Dude, that is so badass. Only second to the Hound's helmet in the first episode of season one. For his first challenge, Prince Damon Targaryen chooses Sir Gawain Hightower of Old Town, eldest son of the Hand of the King. <laughs> wow. All right, then. Damn. Bro is taking shots at him every time, every every chance he gets. Every chance he gets, he's taking shots. Damn, I thought he knocked him off the horse. Good recovery. What was that? What was that? Was that foul? That was some foul play shit. Bro hit the horse or something, like tripped up the horse. What was that? And I can win these games, Lady Allison. Having your favor would all but assure it. Oh, is she also related to him? Oh, she's having birth. Having birth? Fucking what, dude? Giving birth. I'm, I'm not okay. Oh Jesus. Oh damn. Oh damn. Did he kill him? And the day grows ugly. Well, that can't be fair. God damn. <laughs> Bro in the back is definitely me. To make an impossible choice. The baby or his wife. Well, speak it. To sacrifice one or to lose them both. Yeah. God Sir damn Kristen that dude's Cole face. And I wonder if Prince Damon, if uh, the eventual, like the eventuality of having a son comes into play, could be the whole thing of like the uncle wanting to kill his nephew so he gets back in the line of succession you know so he remains the heir i don't know if that ever comes to fruition but you know whatever why you cut away like that bro what happened i love you yeah it's true man Cause either either it's just the baby dies, or sorry, just the Emma dies, or they both die. Cause if they can't get the baby out, then they're both not gonna survive. But then if you sacrifice the wife, then at least the baby survives. So it's not a good position to be in. Oh my god! Making the first incision. Shit! Bro just hit a 50-50 grind across that whole rail! Oh shit. Oh shit! A lot of great choreography, man. I mean, there's a lot of quick cuts, which I'm not as big a fan of, but a lot of good choreography, though. I like it. Bro, how are you gonna tell your wife not to be scared? They're literally slicing her open, man. Bro learned nothing from Oberyn Tyre. Like, fuck, yeah. Bro. Yield. Prince Oberyn taught you nothing? Yield. Prince Oberyn taught you nothing. You never celebrate before the job is done, dude. Also, I almost said Oberyn Tyrell instead of Oberyn Martell. Don't worry about it.
Congratulations, Your Grace. Son or daughter? You have a son. Oh shit, it is! Oh damn. We've only seen one dragon so far. They said his name earlier, but I forget it. It's an interesting name. Where's the other dragons at? Say what? The baby died? The baby died as well? Damn. I mean, yeah, you kind of need the mother for the baby to continue nurturing for like the first little while, but... Wow. Dracarys! Nice. It's good to hear that again. What Damon would do were he king, but no one can doubt his ambition. Look at what he did with the gold cloaks. Oh, that's such a great the shot. City watches. You said he was a spendthrift that would beggar the realm. Putting Damon in command of the City Watch was your solution. A half measure, Your Grace. The truth is, Damon should be far away from this court. Damon is my brother. Mike Ehrman Trout has my said brother. it. No more half measures. No more half measures, Walter. My brother would murder me. Take my crown. Are you? Please. Oh, he's listening Damon in. That's why they showed that shot this. earlier. But not okay, for the fair. Well, who else would have a claim? His daughter? The king's firstborn child. Mm. Rhaenyra. Nice. Uh, my wife and son are dead! I will not sit here and suffer crows that come to feast on their corpses! Damn, fair. Fair, fair, fair. Also, man, this is such a good, like, return to form of good dialogue. I'm not gonna lie. I like the dialogue a lot of this show. And no, like, stupid tonal shifts. Like, it has the same tone throughout the entire episode. It's really good. My darling. Yeah, so that is his daughter. You tell him to go fuck the Grace. I thought you might go to him. Offer him comfort. In his chambers. Ew. You might wear one of your mother's dresses. Oh, God. That's creepy. Imagine prostituting your daughter to the king. That's kind of weird, bro. And, like, her and the king's daughter are friends. Like, what? I fucked your father? <laughs> Unless they're not going there to fuck, but that's what I thought was going to happen. So much anxiety in this girl. Styling him. The heir for a day. Ouch. It's kind of painful. And mean. Yo. You cut the image of the cold. God, that looks so together. good, man. That looks so good. And the blood of the dragon runs thick. Then why do you cut me so deep? I've only ever spoken the truth. I see Otto Hightower for what he is. An unwavering and loyal a hand. A cunt. <laughs> <laughs> a son who stands to inherit nothing he doesn't seize Fair. Otto Hightower is a more honorable man than you could ever be. I don't know about that. You're weak, Viserys. And that council of leeches knows it. They all prey on you for their own ends. I agree, especially with the Hand of the King guy. The Hand of the King guy. Otto, I think his name is. Not anymore. I definitely agree. He's definitely out for himself. God, that music is beautiful. That uh, music is beautiful. Bro, he cut himself again on one of the swords. Is bro gonna get, like, tetanus or something? Like, infected from one of those cuts? Gotta happen that way, right? Oh, never mind, bro. Balerion's already dead. Never mind. I'm stupid. I thought Balerion flew through this time, but maybe not. Will I ever get to see Balerion the Black Dread fly in all his glory? Will I ever get to see it? And now you've seen your king's guard down. Answer me. Oh, is he going to appoint her it's his new heir? What do you see? Oh, shit. This is no trivial gesture, Rhaenyra. A dragon saddle is one thing, but the Iron Throne is the most dangerous seat in the realm. Very Force dangerous because it's going to kill Force King Viserys. <laughs> Viserys. And without deceit. Oh, I swear that's a nice looking dragon. And the Great winter comes, Rhaenyra. All of Westeros must stand against it. And if the world of men is to survive, a Targaryen must be seated on the Iron Throne. A king or queen. Strong enough to unite the realm against the cold.
It's technically both Jon Snow and Daenerys. Oh, you hear that Targaryen theme coming in in the background as well? Oh god, it's beautiful. Of the Andal and the Rhoynar and the first oh, that's man. a beautiful dragon. What a way to end the episode, bro. What a way to end the episode. Holy cow. God, that was beautiful. That was just beautiful. Oh, it feels good to be back. It feels good to be back. Man, that was a that was a fantastic pilot. I mean, just whew, very good. It's it's just nice to be back in the Game of Thrones universe, being written well, having a good tone, good cinematography, no forced jokes. Like the season, the whole season eight, season seven debacle. That shit just turned so many people off on this show, and it's just so nice to be back in it. This feels like prime Game of Thrones with really good writing, great acting, great music, great cinematography. So far, a great story. I'm very intrigued. I love House Targaryen. I think House Targaryen's probably the interesting, the most interesting house along with House Lannister. My favorite house is of course House Stark, but the most interesting ones are probably Lannister and Targaryen. Uh, especially Targaryen history is super, super interesting and super dope. So I'm very excited for this show to just delve into it completely. There are a lot of lines throughout it that are just like, so cool to see when you when we know what happens in the future him even talking now you know 172 years before it talking about the the great winter that came along with the night king and all the white walkers and everything the long winter which and he's like he said you know it takes it's up to the targaryen king or queen must sit on the iron throne in order to defeat it and technically it was both you know john snow and daenerys targaryen both technically quote unquote sitting on the throne um because they both were instrumental in defending it they were both the two leaders who came together so i like how that's like almost poetic writing and how it eventually came to pass um i had jumped when he said balon bro i thought that was the homeboy because i thought balerion was during this time but balerion's dead here too so like i'm just listen i've seen so many you know when i read about balerion i saw videos about balerion i was like this dude is the coolest fucking thing ever i want to see him I will never see him. It appears I will never get to see Beleria on the Black Dread hit the screen. I want to though. I just keep seeing this dude's skull. It's massive. I want to see him. You understand me? The dude's wingspan was a football field. Like I want to see Beleria on the Black Dread. Even if it's just a flashback, I want to see him. I don't know if I'll ever get to, but I want to. I just finished recording, but I I just realized it's it's fucking Aegon. Aegon the fucking conqueror and his two sisters. Aegon rode Beleria on the Black Dread. Obviously. I'm stupid. Don't worry about it. Um, I really, really liked Prince Daemon. I really liked him a lot. I think he might be... Him and Rhaenyra are my favorite characters from this episode so far. Love both of them. Rhaenyra feels so much like Daenerys, where you can tell she's a good heart, but she's strong. And she definitely deserves, I think, to be the heir as well. I think she would be a good leader, but she's young. But, um... I think it's smart on Viserys' part of making her cupbearer because, you know, she gets to sit in on all the councils, she gets to pay attention to the politics, she gets to pay attention to how everyone talks, how everyone thinks, how everyone acts, how the kingdom is ran, so that I think is really instrumental for her developing process uh, to understand what it is to be a ruler, to be a queen, to be a king. So I think um, Viserys making Ra uh, Rhaenyra a cupbearer was a very smart decision. I know he did that way before he ever thought of making her heir, but I'm glad that she is cupbearer because it's clearly something that helps her or will help her going forward. But um, yeah, Prince, uh, Prince, yeah, well, technically it was Prince Daemon, it's not anymore. I did really like his character, I still do. Him and Rhaenyra are definitely the standouts. Um, him being banished, like, I really feel Daemon on that one. I can, you can easily see Otto is just straight up the little finger of this little section right here, you know what I mean? Like, he is just, you can so clearly see he's out for himself, and the power of being the Hand of the King has gone to his head. Um... Because you can see how much he loves having that power and how outspoken he is because of it. Like, I I don't know, just the way he speaks, the way he looks, the way he acts, he has this sense of arrogance or confidence in himself and this sense of entitlement to him where the power of being the Hand of the King is very clearly gotten to him. So when, when Daemon said it, he's like, I would protect you from yourself and from these other leeches and crows who are talking, 
and who sense your weakness he's like i would protect you because i'm your brother i 100 percent believed him on that and i agree with him there and like even like otto saying you know when they said by design claiming that damon might kill prince Viser prince uh king viserys and prince damon is like like he heard that but he knows for a fact he would never do that and i i believe he wouldn't do that um i don't think he'd kill his brother maybe as time goes on and we see it you know maybe with their relationship declining maybe he does but at the current point and during the episode i never thought he would have committed that but clearly they think that and like yeah i agree he might be a little rash and hot-headed but he's nowhere near as rash or hot-headed as some of the older characters we have seen throughout this show um and when i say this show obviously i mean game of thrones as well because this is you know it's it's like the hobbit and the lord of the rings we're in the tolkien universe we're in the song of ice and fire universe it's it's all connected we're talking about the same thing here um we've seen hot-headed people in these shows and prince damon so far just really isn't it yet not even close not even fucking close to a hot-headed character so i don't know about that um i love how prince damon was you know celebrating uh when he got the uh dontarian guy from the house of coal on the ground and like he lost the fight because of that and i was literally just like bro did you learn nothing from the viper against the mountain did you learn nothing you know what i mean like i if obrin martel got his head smashed in for a reason i mean he was showboating though he's putting on a show but i like how because he yielded the battle afterwards so i thought he would have thrown a fit at that point but he didn't so you know it's cool i do like viserys as a king i think he is a good king i don't know if i'd call him weak but maybe he is a little bit not not by much i still think he has a spine he's got a backbone i think he's a strong one but maybe not as strong as some other kings or as some other people but man the whole call with his wife and his son so sad and they both ended up dying too like that uh that that fucking sucks too both of them ended up dying he tried his best to save one of them and they both died anyway so like that's tough but I'm trying to remember because I remember if you remember in season three, I believe it is Arya and Tywin are talking because this is when Arya is at Harrenhal and Tywin makes her his cupbearer and she's talking about, I believe it is, I, I think it's Visenya Viserys, but this is Viserys, someone else Viserys, not this King Viserys, at least I don't think so, you know, or maybe it is honestly, no, actually it might be, I lied, it might be, now that I'm remembering because king viserys is this one when he when he got onto the throne and then his uh the other eldest sister of the king at the beginning of the episode i can't remember her name but i think it was like Re Re renair i don't fucking remember her name not renira because that's the daughter the older cousin lady married to the other guy who sits on the council um i think she was one of the other ones so it might be her because she also wields um whatever the sword was dark sister that prince damon now wields um she's the one who wielded that sword before him so i'm trying to remember it might be them that Arya is inspired by but i'm trying to just like piece it together because there's a lot of like random thoughts flowing in the wind and i can't remember which one goes where but it's so much fun to be back in it you know and theorizing and thinking about it it's a lot of fun also i love like like i said man the return to form of writing is just so evident with so many things being said and how they act but like the cutting between the birth of the kid and the jousting you know at the beginning when um, Emma's talking to Rhaenyra and she's like, you know, because Rhaenyra is much like Daenerys and much like Arya, where they're not the high lady, they don't want to just sit in the house, be the wife, be the child bearer, you know, you know, like, um, like Emma said, for, for the women of this world, being a mother is their battlefield, having children is their battlefield. And, you know, Rhaenyra is like, nah, dude, I want to, you know, put on the armor. I want to go fight. I want to do this. She's a lot like Arya, a lot like Daenerys. But I love how that scene where she says at the beginning that, you know, childbearing and being a mother is the battlefield for the queen and for the women of this time. And then it's just cut back and forth between the men jousting and her giving birth, like side by side, battlefield on one side, battlefield on the other. But you know what I mean? Like, just I like how that kind of writing is just so easily shown here. So, I mean, already it's just so much better than everything I've had. I couldn't be happier. Also, um, yeah, uh, the guy who acts as Prince Damon, I, I forget the actor's name. I think he was in Morbius and he was Doctor Who for a time. He's great. I really like his portrayal of Prince Damon. I really, really like him a lot. And the guy who plays both Otto and King Viserys, love both of them too. In terms of acting, they've both given fantastic performances so far. I love them a lot. Um, 
And same with the actor for Rhaenyra and the actor for her friend, Otto's daughter. She's also very good. A lot of anxiety in that girl, but I like them a lot as well. And also, yeah, man, like I said, like I think Otto is definitely like the little finger where he's hiding, like doing stuff behind the scenes. I don't trust him at all. I do trust Prince Damon to protect King Viserys, but I don't trust Otto to protect King Viserys. I trust Otto to do as he pleases. And like both times, like especially at the end there, right? He was writing the letter and he said to send it to Old Town, I think. Is that right? said it? Either way, he sent out a raven to somewhere. And when he was writing the raven and sending it, he told his daughter to go to the king's chambers to keep him company, keep him occupied. But again, this guy's a schemer. He's doing his own things. He sent her there to distract the king so he could do things behind the scenes uninterrupted. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that she, I'm sorry, I think that he is most definitely the snake in the grass and we will see it going forward. Why is it always, why is it always the fucking, what are they, the, the coin people, what are they called? <laughs> what was Littlefinkel's job? He said it earlier as well for Otto. I forget what they call them, but the master of coin. Why is it always the masters of coin? The greedy bitches that are always genuinely greedy. These, these motherfuckers are the snakes in the ground, always. It's very annoying. I don't like it. And he's handed the king too. So on top of being master of coin, he's handed the king. I, I don't know, man. I don't trust that guy. We're going to find out later. 110%. He's going to betray us in some way, shape or form. Um, but also the other thing I love is the chair, the throne. Yes, 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 yes. I'll put a picture on screen of what the throne is actually supposed to look like. Because even in the books, it's described as a thousand swords kind of thing. So like this is so much closer to what the throne is actually supposed to be. But I love how they did it to where it's like, this is what the throne looks like. But then later on when the Baratheons come in and they're the ones on the throne, they take away all the swords. They just keep the chair, but they throw away the rest of the swords. I like how it still kind of lines up that way instead of being the thousand sword thing. But now of course, since the Targaryens are the leaders of the household, they have all the swords because that's how they want their throne to look. So I like how technically it still lines up even though it doesn't look the exact same in Game of Thrones, but it looks the same here. Love it. Also, I love the filming of the joust scene fantastic and the scene where he they both get kicked off their horses but then they start fighting that whole scene also i love the filming of that like i said it was a little bit too quick cut for me i wish they would have stuck on some shots a little bit longer if you probably go back and count all the cuts there was quite a few but the good thing is the um the fighting lined up the choreography lined up nothing felt out of place there was no continuity issues there so i did like the fight choreography for that scene i just wish there's the cuts were a little bit longer but it was still really well done i really enjoyed that fight the jousting too fantastic also very good and it's just so much fun seeing like because it's so far in the past it's fun seeing these things and we can be like ah yes i remember that from when we did see it in the future like it's so cool seeing the things how they look in the future compared to how they look now or people that we heard about from this time and now we get to see them like i just love that i love going through the history of it it is so awesome and it's such a rich world it's very much tolkien expired i mean as people have said you know like tolkien is the classic fantasy author and now J.R.R. martin j uh, george R. R. martin is now like the current version of tolkien and i think he truly is his, his like just his ability to write these worlds and stuff is just so so enthralling he is he drips so much nuance and history into it everything is so meticulously thought out like it's just so well done and this episode portrayed all of that beautifully i, I very much loved it also is viserys gonna die from that fucking chair is he gonna get like tetanus infected by getting cut on that thing i don't know i don't know what that's about how he keeps getting cut but I, I mean, I imagine he'll die sometime soon, and that's like a foreshadowing of something. <laughs> I don't know what, but something. But yeah, I'm gonna cut it there. I've been talking for too long anyway, but I'm excited for the next episode. I love this one a lot. Tell me what you thought. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know, how did you like the episode? Make sure to tell me the information, because there's so much shit to remember about the show, and I'm someone who loves to read up about the show. So if there's more information about the history, if I got anything wrong, which I probably did, probably got plenty of shit wrong, because I'm misremembering a bunch of stuff. It's been a long time. But I'm hyped to get back into this, so let me know. Leave a like, Patreon, full length, all that jazz. I'll catch y'all next time. Bada bo! Hey guys, thank you all for watching that recent video, and I just want to give a special shout out to Oko Canutilla. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm really sorry if I'm not, but just want to give a special shout out to you. You've been subscribed to my tier one on Patreon for a while now, and I appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for the support. Love you guys.